Now we're going to get to division. Now, addition, subtraction, multiplication, everything seems pretty normal so far, right? But when you get to division, um, I'm going to give you an example to think about, to ponder, before I show you how to do it. So just write down this as an example. Here we go. Minus 14 plus 5i on. Okay, so this is the question we're going to do in about three minutes. Right? But before we do that, I want you to ponder how would you even start such a question, right? Um, here, the, the familiar rules of arithmetic served you very well. You're like, I know how to add stuff, I know how to multiply stuff. But when you look at this guy, you're like, what? <coughs> Where do I go, right? I'm expecting I should get a single complex number at the end, not a, not a pair of them, right? So what could I do with this? Yeah, Annie. Okay, now rationalizing denominators, that's a really helpful idea. But rationalizing makes sense when what you've got is an irrational number. Now, I have no square roots there. I will get to square roots soon, okay? Well, I don't have any, rationalizing doesn't make sense, right? Because it's not, it's not the fact that it's irrational that's the problem, right? The problem is that I have non-real parts in there, okay? But this is a very helpful idea. Let's have a think about this, right? If I went back to say, actually, I've already got one. Let's have a look at something like this, okay? So remember I said I'm going to take my cues from the way irrational numbers work. So this is a good alley to go down, okay? If I gave you this question, um, here's a question that has to do with just irrational numbers, right? 7 minus 3 on, I think it's 5 plus root 3. Yeah. Okay. Now, in this case, what happens is rules kick in, right? You're like, I know what to do with this. Regardless of why, I know how to handle this. Can someone tell me what to do? What shall I do to simplify this? Yeah, right. Times multiply 5 plus <laughs> Yep, very good. And of course, if you multiply the top, you better multiply the bottom, right? Okay, now the reason why this is useful is because you've got a rational number and it's trying to play ball with an irrational number and it won't do it, right? So that's why we multiply this by this because conjugates let us use difference of squares, okay? So we're not going to finish this off because it gets a bit messy up here, but I just want to get the first line so you can see what will happen, okay? Um, you've got this eight flying around at the front, you're going to get this somewhat messy expansion up the top, but it'll work. But please tell me, and this time simplify it for me because you can, what are we going to get on the denominator when everything comes out in the wash? I, you're going to get 22, right? Because you've got a squared minus b squared. That's going to be 25 take away 3. Okay? And the reason why that's good is because now that you've got a rational denominator, it can work together with everything else in that question. Cool. So now you have a look at this. Now the problem is not that the denominator is irrational. The problem is it has imaginary things in it, things that aren't real, right? So therefore, to make it play ball, well, instead of making things rational, I want to make them real. So when you make something rational, we call that rationalizing. So if you want to make something real, what do you think that would be called? It's called realizing. So we're going to realize this denominator, okay? Not like, huh, realize. We're just gonna change it, multiply by the conjugate, which in this case is? Two minus three, I. Good morning. And this is going to allow us to actually compute with this, okay? So let's have a go at this. We're going to do this properly now. Um, on the top there, I'm just going to write that first, like I did up here, and then I'll deal with the denominator. So I've got negative 14 plus 5i, 2 minus 3i on. Okay, think with me, right? Difference of squares down here. Unlike here, I'm super comfortable with working with real numbers, but here I don't want to muck this up. So down here I'm going to have 2 squared take away. So, so I'm, I'm going to write the square just like I've written. I know I could have written that as 4, but I wrote it as 2 squared so I didn't screw it up. Here I'm going to write the 3i squared. Are you comfortable with that? Right? There are so many negative signs here. You're sort of asking for it if you're trying to do that all in your head at the same time. You'll get there eventually, just 
Not yet. <coughs> All right, we can start to un unravel this now, okay? Um, this top here is the question we did before. Well, I mean, it's not exactly, but you get the idea. So tell me what to write. Do you want to go, hold on, hold on. You do, I'm, I'm going to do the oh, numerator first. Let's oh, do the numerator. Uh, it's okay, I forgive you. I'm gracious and merciful like that. Uh, I'm going to get negative 28. Uh, 14 by 3 is 42. 42. Watch your signs. 10i minus 15i squared. Happy? Yeah, looks good. Okay, now we can deal with this denominator. So you've got 4, and then you've got minus 3i squared. The 3 will become a 9. So I will become a one. Okay, so you're going to start to get a theme here, right? Where you guys quite quickly told me 22 before, because you're like 25 take away 3, I know what to do with this. Because of that I in there, you don't get <coughs> the difference of squares. You actually end up getting a sum. Did you notice that? Because the I will always give you that plus sign <coughs> rendering there. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, let's just finish this out. Uh, that negative 15 I squared is going to become a plus 15. So that leaves me with a real part of negative 13. What's my imaginary part? On 13, which conveniently leaves me with... Or not conveniently, because I made up this question to give me neat numbers. Okay, so, so what have you done? You've realized the denominator, and that allowed you to, well, get rid of the denominator. That's the whole point of division, isn't it? Okay. Um, I will point out, you know, the numbers don't always obviously end up that neat. For example, if all I had was this, if I just changed it to be this, okay, you're like, pfft, why? Okay, now there's nothing wrong with that. You know, sometimes when you get a question and the numbers don't, don't come out neatly, you get a little bit suspicious, okay? These happen all the time. Um, you've seen before, even early on when we just solved a very simple quadratic, it's not even like rational numbers. You get square roots in here and that happens frequently, so don't freak out. Um, in this case though, usually we would say, no, go to the next line. Write it with the real part and the imaginary part separately. Even it gives you something somewhat messy. I would prefer writing this like this, okay? Because it's in that form, A plus BI, or IB, or whichever, it doesn't really matter, okay? But that's just a, a matter of notation. It's not that important, okay? All right, that's arithmetic, that's it. Now, you can see it's like, ah, oh, it's so familiar. But so not. You're like, if you say to someone um, in the library, like you're working together, you're like, oh, I better realize that denominator. Some two or three student will look at you like, what's wrong with you? Like, do you not know what that's called? And you're like, ha ha ha, I know things you don't. So it, it's familiar, but at the same time, kind of strange. Okay. 